this morning, briefly before we flow to the communion service, I want to share the word of God within the time available. I will continue. It's a journey that I believe the Holy Spirit is starting with us on a very auspicious day like this. In this very august occasion. <laughs> Praise God. And uh, I believe the Lord will take us through. One of the things that the Holy Spirit told me that will make up for an effective life, especially an effective Christian life, is how much of the Holy Spirit you know. That subject keep coming over and over again. The reason is because it is a subject that we must not just write down. It is a subject that we must not just master. It is a subject that we must experience. The Bible says, not by power, not by mind, but by my spirit. That is not just a verse of the scripture. That is a principle for life. A principle for what? For life. And that principle must reflect in everything you are doing as much as you are a Christian. Don't try to live life by your power or by your mind. Live life by the Spirit of the Lord. Don't try to go into academics by your power, by your mind. Go into academics by the Spirit of the Lord. Don't try to go into business by your power, by your mind. Go into business by the Spirit of the Lord. Don't try to go into marriage, go into life, go into different things in life by your power, by your mind. Go into it by the Spirit of the Lord. I have discovered that victories become cheap if we live life by the power of the Spirit. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? That's the best that can happen to you. That is your major difference as a child of God. That is your edge above the unbelievers. That is the proof that you are serving God. That is the proof that you are different. Your team will not be by power, will not be by mind, but by the Spirit of the Lord. There are supernatural finances. That is the finances orchestrated by the Spirit of the Lord. Are you getting what I'm saying? And the administrator of the spiritual inheritance is the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit told me to that we should get on this journey. And it's not a journey that we are going to rush. We'll take it little by little, little by little. So that it is my joy that everybody in this church, even the smallest boy, will come to know Holy Spirit personally and come to take advantage of the strategic ministries of the Holy Spirit. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? That's when the fruit of his investment in our life will begin to show to the world. That's when we we'll become a wonder to the world. We cannot afford to live a life in the flesh. We will suffer for a long time. The world will catch up with us. But beloved, there is the flight of the Spirit that the Holy Ghost is offering. He's saying, come on. Come on. But this aeroplane, this flight of the Spirit and let him take you on a ride. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So there are different dimensions in those studying the Holy Spirit. I don't just want to fill your head with knowledge. I want to, I want to provoke you by the help of the Holy Spirit to enter into a season that you are personally thirsty for the Holy Ghost. Are you hearing me now? You are personally thirsty for it. Okay? You are personally thirsty for the Holy Spirit. There is nothing you are doing that the Holy Spirit is not interested in. Just like the Holy Spirit is interested in ministry, the Holy Spirit is also interested in your business. The Holy Spirit is interested in your career. 
The Holy Spirit is interested in politics. The Holy Spirit is interested in governance. The Holy Spirit is interested in your marriage. The Holy Spirit, you understand what I'm saying now? Just like the Holy Spirit is interested in ministry. So I want, by the grace of God and the help of the Holy Spirit, that in the course of this journey, you will have more tasks to know him personally. You will be an anointed businessman. You'll not just be an ordinary mental businessman. You'll be an anointed businessman. If you are a politician, you'll be an anointed politician. The politician that walk by the spirit. You know, elections are won first in the spirit before they are won in the physical. If you lose the election in the spirit, you are not going to win it in the physical. Are you getting what I'm saying now? You are going to be an anointed father, an anointed mother, an anointed husband, an anointed wife, an anointed businessman, an anointed student. You study by revelation. That's when you can fulfill your destiny. And every one of us need the Holy Spirit. That's the journey that the Holy Spirit is taking us through. So this morning, let me start with this. The role of the Holy Spirit in prayer, thanksgiving, and worship. The role of the Holy Spirit in prayer, thanksgiving, and worship. The role of the... We just have to start somewhere because the Holy Spirit is a vast ocean in the Spirit. Did, did you get what I'm saying now? The Holy Spirit is a vast ocean in the Spirit. We just have to start somewhere. The role of the Holy Spirit in prayer, thanksgiving, and worship. And many of you will take note now that in the last two weeks, I think, I've been talking about the Holy Spirit to you. Yes or no? The last two weeks. In fact, the seven days prayer that we ended yesterday was all through talking about the Holy Spirit. So I see a season of... When, 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 when we enter into a season of rest, we enter into a season of help. Help, rest and help. Rest and help. Who is the coordinator of the two? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of rest. The Holy Spirit is the helper himself. Your paracletus. Somebody say my paracletus. Say my paracletus. Say my paracletus. My help. Okay? My senior partner. Okay? My senior partner. That's the Holy Spirit. Many times when I talk to the Holy Spirit, I will say great Holy Spirit. Great Holy Spirit. Great Holy Spirit. May you know how to relate with the Holy Spirit as a person. I say, great Holy Spirit. Great Holy Spirit. Great Holy Spirit. Great Holy Spirit. Great Holy Spirit, help me. When I came in here this morning, that's, that's my regular prayer. Anytime I come to church, I kneel down there. Because when I come in, I kneel down and pray. Somebody is watching. What is he praying about? Now, can I tell you what I pray about? Every time you see me pray, when I come to church, I kneel down and pray. Do you know what I'm praying about? I'm asking the, my senior partner to help me. I'm asking him, I don't know the direction for the service. So take over. Do it yourself. Use me. Sustain me. Strengthen me. Let it be easy for me today. Let it be easy for me today. Let every part of my body cooperate with the work that you are doing. Don't let it be that there is an operation that would have come if a part of my body has cooperated. That's what I pray for. Are you hearing me now? Are you hearing me now? Give me your trance. Help me. Great Holy Spirit. Glorify Jesus. Those are, those are wonderful prayers that brings the Holy Spirit to you. When you declare your helplessness and you tell him he is your help, beloved, it will show up faster than you think. That's the full meaning of it is not by power, it is not by mind, but by my work by my spirit. So, I want you to say that prayer. I had to say my prayer because I want you to also say your own very, and be very consistent with it. When you are going now, ask the Holy Spirit to go with you. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead you. Ask the Holy Spirit to go with you to the market. I get what I'm saying now. You are going to your office. Tell the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, go, go with me to the office. Go ahead of me. Help me today. Help me to know what to say, how to respond to people. Great Holy Spirit, take over this day and you will see it will begin to help. It's my senior partner. I am the junior partner in this deal. Did you hear that? In this deal. Somebody say in this deal. I am the junior partner. The Holy Spirit is the senior partner. Okay? 
in the business of your life, you are the junior partner. The Holy Spirit is the senior partner. And it is the senior partner that makes the decision. The junior partner just flow with the decision of the senior partner. Is that okay? Praise God. Huh. I want you to write down these scriptures. Jude one twenty. We'll get to it later. Jude one twenty. Number two. Ephesians chapter six verse eighteen. Ephesians chapter six verse eighteen. Number three. Ephesians chapter five verse eighteen to twenty. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 to 20. And number 4, if we are able to get there, which I doubt, Philippians chapter 3, verse 3. <laughs> Praise God. So I'll, I'll go over the scriptures again so that you can update the one you didn't get. Jude chapter 1, verse 20. That's the first scripture. Jude chapter 1, verse 20. Number two, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. And then number three, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 to 20. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 to 20. And uh, the last one, Philippians chapter 3, verse 3. Now, these scriptures that I have mentioned are deeply significant. on the subject of the Holy Spirit role in prayer, in thanksgiving, and in worship. Those four scriptures are very, very significant on the role of the Holy Spirit in prayer. The role that the Holy Spirit play in prayer, the role that the Holy Spirit play in thanksgiving, and the role that the Holy Spirit play in worship. Now, what I want you to do now is we are splitting them into three. Number one, write in your note prayer. And in front of it, you will put Jude one twenty and Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18. Jude one twenty and Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18. That one goes for prayer. Number two, write thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And in front of thanksgiving, write Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 to 20. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 to 20. I'm trying to make it as simple as much as possible for everyone to follow. And even after the service, when you get back home, for the next one month, before we meet again by the grace of God, next fellowship of the firstborn service, September, you would have read those scriptures, taking time to meditate on them, and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. So the first one, which is prayer, in front of it, what do you write? Jude one twenty and Ephesians 6, 18. The second one is thanksgiving. Ephesians chapter what? 5, 18, and 20. And then the third one is worship. Of course, you know what to write in front of it. What do you write? Philippians 3, 3. Okay. The truth is that authentic prayers, because there are, there are too many fake prayers in the last days. I don't want you to pray fake prayers again. Prayer, is, prayer has volume. But it is not the volume of prayer that determines the efficacy of prayer. Okay? Did you get that? No, don't write until I tell you to write. Just listen. Prayer has volume. Somebody say prayer has volume. What I mean by that is if I kneel down in my house and I'm praying alone, there is a volume of prayer that I can generate. Yes or no? Alone. But all of us here now, we are gathered together now, we are praying together. There is a volume of prayer we can generate. Which one will be bigger? 
in terms of volume of prayer? The one we pray together like this or the one you pray alone in your house? Which one will be bigger? The one we pray together like this. That's why I say prayer has what? Volume. But listen to me. Many people think the volume of prayer is equivalent to the efficacy of prayer. The answer is no. The answer is no. When you hear people say, when you hear a crowd gathering, and they say you will call the name of Jesus three times, I am not disparaging that. Are you hearing me now? As long as it is the name of Jesus that they ask you to call. Okay? If you want to call it seven times, that's not my issue. And they say you will shout. And then you hear, have you been in a place where prayer is falling down like waterfalls? How many of you have been in that kind of situation? <laughs> uh, did you hear? Have you, been in, have you seen that before? Where prayer is falling down like waterfalls. The volume of prayer. Everybody will pray. The whole place will be shaking. You, you will hear amen like this. Will, you will know that, yeah. Now, that's good. That is volume. That is prayer volume. Somebody say prayer volume. But listen to me. Prayer volume is not equivalent to prayer effectiveness. Prayer volume is not, if, if the Holy Spirit does not take over, volume will become empty noise. Volume will become what? Empty noise. It is the volume that people focus. And they begin to get frustrated when the answer has not come. Answer, answer to prayer effectiveness. It doesn't answer to prayer volume. Is somebody hearing me now? Have you heard people say, with all the prayers I have prayed, with all the prayers I have prayed, why have I not gotten answer? Prayer volume does not equate, equate prayer effectiveness. Prayer is effective only when the Holy Ghost takes over the prayer. Listen to me. Which, which, what, do you, what must you keep your focus on? It's good to generate the volume. It's good. Is scriptural. Did you hear me now? To generate volume. But listen to me. It is better to focus on the effectiveness. Okay? If the prayer is going to be answered and it's going to be effective, beloved, the Holy Ghost must take charge. The Holy Ghost must take charge. There is no prayer that the Father in heaven will answer if the Holy Ghost on the earth does not approve it. How many of you know that the Trinity works in, in union? They don't contradict themselves. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Yes or no? You will never see them fight. You and I can't start any quarrel between them. <laughs> Do you know some children can start quarrel between their father and mother? Do you know friends can start quarrel between their... <laughs> that the couple that have been very united before, friends can scatter them. But let me tell you, you and I cannot start any quarrel between God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. They work together. The prayer that the Father will answer is the prayer that the Holy Ghost approves. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? So, prayer volume is not equated to prayer effectiveness. So, I want you to give me this scripture. Jude one twenty, and Ephesians 6.18. First of all, give me Jude one twenty. I want you to make it as bold as possible. And then we're going to read it together. Are you with me now? But ye, beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Somebody say praying. Somebody say praying. Praying in the Holy Ghost. 
Now, give me Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. I want you to underline praying in the Holy Ghost in your own Bible. Praying. Say praying. Say praying. Now, so, it becomes an act. It becomes a habit. It becomes a lifestyle. Prayer, prayer meeting is not just a meeting you attend. It's a life you live. It's a life you live. Did you hear me? A life you live. Somebody say, prayer is not a meeting I attend. It's a life I live. Prayer is not a meeting you attend. It's a life you live. How do you know that a man and a woman, that the, their marriage is healthy? How do you know? What is the first yardstick to know that this marriage is healthy? Hello? What? Ask me. What? Communication. Tell me communication. When there is communication between the man and the woman, their marriage is healthy. But when there's no communication, this one doesn't know what this one is doing. That one doesn't know what that one is doing. This one is afraid to talk to this one. This one is afraid. Now, they may be wearing an coat to church. That marriage is sick. It's just a matter of time. They are decorating foolishness. They are decorating what is wrong. Did you hear that now? How many of you have seen mud houses before? Talk to me. You have seen mud houses before. Okay, when it is not plastered, you say this is mud house. But if you didn't see it when it was still mud, but by the time they plaster it, we do, there are many houses that you don't know is mud though. <laughs> oh. Hello? They will plaster, you don't have some mud houses, they will plaster it. They use cement, cement will be very, very conk. They plaster it, everything that if you are not there when they were building the house, you will never, you, fa you can't even think it is mud. Because they are plastered, they are painted it. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. So you will always know when a marriage is healthy by look, look at the level of communication. The same way, how do you know you are a healthy believer? By your prayer life. Somebody say, by my prayer life. So after me, prayer is not a meeting I attend. It's a life I live every day. is a life I live every day. I want you to have a very different concept of prayer from today. So when the Bible says praying in the Holy Ghost he's talking about continuous war pray, being a lifestyle. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 what again did we see? Praying what? Always with all prayer and supplication. Where? In the spirit. Somebody say in the spirit. Now I have to say this because many of us are prayerful people. We are praying a lot in this country. But many times we don't pray in the spirit. When I say pray in the spirit, I'm not talking of speaking in tongues now. That's no, I'm talking of a spirit control prayer. I'm not just talking of speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is another thing entirely. Understand the standpoint of the Holy Ghost. The prayer orchestrated by the Spirit is the prayer that the Father cannot overlook. The prayer orchestrated by the Spirit is the prayer that the Father cannot overlook. The reason why we are not seeing a lot of prayer effectiveness is because most prayers are controlled by the flesh. Most prayers are controlled by the flesh. The Father does not answer a prayer orchestrated by the flesh. The Father answers prayer orchestrated by by the spirit you want your prayers to be answered let me see your hand you want to see answer to prayer more and more more and more now understand that it must be prayers orchestrated by what by the spirit supplication in the spirit and watching there unto now many of us when we pray in the spirit we lack practical watching even though the spirit orchestrated the prayer, but you still watch. Somebody say watch. And watching dear unto with what? All perseverance and supplication for all sin. Did you get that? The truth is that authentic prayers, authentic thanksgiving, authentic worship can never be done in the flesh. can never be done in the flesh can never be done through the flesh 
That's the first truth that I want you to take note today. Authentic prayer, authentic worship, authentic thanksgiving can never be done in the flesh. Don't pray in the flesh again. Don't thank God in the flesh again. Don't worship God in the flesh again. That's why you must know the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit has a role to help you pray effectively, to help you thank him effectively, to help you worship God effectively. Number two, if it is not absolutely led, guided and inspired by the Holy Spirit, it is not acceptable to God. If prayer, thanksgiving and worship is not absolutely led, guided and inspired by the Holy Spirit, it is not acceptable to God. It is not acceptable to God. Any prayer that is not led, that is not guided and inspired by the Holy Spirit, is not acceptable to God. It may have volume, but it's not acceptable. Any thanksgiving or worship that is not absolutely led, guided and inspired by the Holy Spirit is not acceptable to God. A prayer that is not led and guided by the Holy Spirit is hollow, is lifeless, is powerless and mechanical. Is hollow, is lifeless, is powerless, it is mechanical. Either prayer, either thanksgiving, either worship, that is not absolutely led and inspired by the Holy Spirit is hollow, is lifeless, is powerless, and it is mechanical. I want to pray for you. You will not pray a lifeless prayer again. You will never pray a lifeless prayer again. You will never give a lifeless thanksgiving again. You will never give a lifeless worship again. Praying, thanking God, and worshiping God without dom the dominating influence of the Holy Spirit is ordinary religion. Write it down, don't forget it. Praying, thanking God, and worshiping God. You know, you know what, why I wrote it in my notes? That praying, I put it in inverted comma. That thanking, I put it in inverted comma. That worship, I put it, because it's not real praying if it is not, if it does not carry the dominating influence of the Holy Spirit. I want you to be a spiritual believer, not just a religious person. You will enjoy the reality of God more when the Holy Spirit take over your prayer life and take over your thanksgiving life and take over your worship life. Many things that I'm teaching you, you will not, you will understand it when you know the Holy Spirit more. I see the Holy Spirit taking us to a place, taking us away from religion and taking us into relationship with the Father. That is what makes us an effective Christian. Everybody go to church, you also go to church. All of us don't return the same way. Because all of us don't know the Holy Spirit the same way. Is that okay? So, praying, thank, thanking God, and worshiping that does, without the dominating influence of the Holy Spirit is ordinary religion. Is ordinary religion. Is ordinary religion. Can I say this, beloved? You are not qualified to pray. You are not qualified to thank and worship God acceptably and effectively without knowing the Holy Spirit. You are not qualified to pray. You are not qualified to thank God and worship God acceptably and effectively without knowing the Holy Spirit. 
It is the Holy Spirit now that helps you to pray. To be acceptable to the Father. Look up many, many times. Mommy does the work of the Holy Spirit for my children. And I want you to take note of this. Every good wife must do the work of the Holy Spirit for their children. Somebody say how. Somebody say how. Now, how many of you agree with me that mommy knows me better than all my children? How many of you know? How many of you agree that this is our affair? It's my first child. Do you know that mommy knows me better than I am? Are you sure? Mommy knows me better than Inyo. Mommy knows me better than Ore. And I have seen her play the same role with our spiritual children. I've seen mommy play the same role with our spiritual children. Can I say this with every sense of humility? Mommy knows me better than all of you. I've seen her play the same role. So many times, mommy will call my children and say, your father doesn't like this. Your father doesn't like this. If you do this, you will get this with him. If you do this, he doesn't like this. Don't do this with daddy. So for them to please me, they have to go through her. Now, if they say, mommy, we don't need you, they will be perpetually walking in my disfavor. Yes or no? Because they will be doing the things that will not please me. Because they don't know me as much as she does. I've seen mommy do the work of the Holy Spirit for some of you. Right? There's a particular time that mommy told us somebody that daddy is annoyed with you. He's angry with you. Go and meet him. Now she did that because she knows me. She understands my silence. If I spoke to a point and I keep quiet at a point, my silence will do more communication than my speaking. How many of you know that? Because there is a reason for silence. So I had to give that because I want you to understand the role of the Holy Spirit. A good wife must ensure that there is there is there is um, understanding between the children and their father. Listen to this. As a good woman, always make sure that you train your children to enter into the favor of their father. Oh, did you hear that? Most of our old mamas here with experience, they will quickly understand what I'm saying. Especially in the how many of you know that you train your children this is how you enter into the favor of your father that is doing the work of the Holy Spirit helping them because you understand your husband better when your husband talk you know what it means when he keeps quiet he doesn't say anything you know what he says the children will say, Daddy, just keep quiet. You will know the meaning of Daddy keeping quiet. And you will now tell your children, This is how you do. This is how you do. I want every woman to rise up. I want to pray for you. Every woman to forward I want you to rise up. I want to pray for you. I see the Lord bringing you into the office of the Holy Spirit like never before. Not only for your children, you will teach young men and young women to walk in the favor of fathers. You will teach them to walk in the favor of fathers. Right? One lady, one lady lived with me and when she was about getting married, the mother said, the father has not done anything. The father has not done anything. The father has not done anything. That the, we the wedding, the engagement and everything should, be, they should bring it to my house. I mean, to her own house. 
That is one where I disagree with her. And I don't think the woman has forgiven me. But the truth of the matter is, I'm a warrior. Once I am on the truth, I don't care that you forgive me or you don't forgive me, either you like me or you don't like me. So the woman said, no, 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 no. At a point, my wife asked her, she elu mi le bifun. Olo lo bi, e shu a bai. She on toman bere lo a gbalagba, she on te bifun, she on koro a me. Itu me, ni kwe she e gato ye men te tofu yi lo nyu. Oma toti close to 40. I won koko ba to jekpe o ni, wako lo ni se, olo lo she be, wade gba fo lo on bo she she. We may lose our life in the process. God knows why those children come through that man. He knows the man is not responsible, the man is not this, the man is not this. Always train your children to enter into the favor of their father. Don't make them have a rebellious attitude to their father. It's a distortion of their future. So I told the woman, I said, you don't have to like it. As long as we are involved, this lady will do the engagement in the house of her father. Even though the father is as irresponsible as you think. I don't care about that. I don't want to get into your personal battle. I want to do what is right before God. And the woman got annoyed, got angry and all that. The daughter begged her, please help me locate his house. Locate his house. Locate his house. Locate his house. For weeks, the woman said, I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. At a point, mommy called me and said, Daddy, let's locate the house of this man. I never know the man. From, I don't know his house from Adam. And then we began to locate. Oh, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. The same day that I took my car with mommy. We drove out. That we don't know where we are going. That same day we saw the man. We saw his house. I got to a place and I told, I told, I met the, the, the first person I met was my junior in the secondary school. He was even the one that saw me. He said, ah, Espo, Espo, what are you doing in this area? I said, I'm looking for a man. And I described. He said, Ah, okay, 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 okay. And he gave me the decision. And then by the time we got closer, we met my, mo my wife's junior brother. He's living around that place. He said, it must be that place. And we got in there. That same day. I fought the battle to ensure that that man was given honor. Even though either I deserve it or it doesn't deserve it, that's not my issue. My issue is that it must be done. That's what is right. I want to pray for you, every woman. Put your hand upon your head, every woman. The same grace will enter into the life of your children. Yeah. Especially those of them that are female. That the anointing to help your children to walk in the favor of God and the favor of their father will rest upon your life. Yeah. <laughs> There are times that your children will say and they will just respond to their father anyhow. You will slap them from behind. Say, Is he your father you are talking to like that? Because there is a place in the life of that child that no other person can stand in except the father. Oh, Nick Badger. Yeah. The hand of God come upon your life. Yeah. You will be a woman of Zion. Yeah. With the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Not only will you help your biological children, you will help children everywhere to walk in the favor of their father. Yeah. Walk in the favor of their father. 
in to sele lari wa atoko e ki pe lari wa atoko e ki se business awon omo yen ma ba ya awon omo won ije mo se gboro mi oko e se ba oko e se ba wa la eyin wa ti eniyan eyin le rira yin te fera yin don't bring your children into the matters between your husband and between yourself and your husband tori gba ti jaba ma pari ko ni tan ninu awon omo won e ma bojo waju eje fun rara e igba melo ni ja fi pari lari oko ati yawo igba melo in te ma ranti po to je pe inu ayo in te jo ma ranti o po to je pe inu e ayo awon mo e o mo level yen the hand of god will come upon you and i want to pray for you today gbogbo iya to je le oko emi mi ma san fun e lopo ina lopo asan ire fun e oni fi e sorun yin ba ti so awon mo e ba jina elomi oni joko iya fun won in the name of jesus you receive that <laughs> praise god ah uh, the holy spirit is happy with the women today men ne ma mura o the holy spirit can be happy with you too amen let me mention two things in i want you to write down spirit led prayer spirit led prayer in the days of jesus the disciples did not know how to pray as they ought to so they came to jesus and said lord teach us to pray luke 11:1 1. yes or no they say lord teach us to pray you must learn prayer did you hear that we must what learn prayer don't assume that you know how to pray you must learn it and just like Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. Today, who is our teacher? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our what? Our teacher. In the same way today, beloved, no matter how fast we are, no matter how long we have read the Bible, no matter how long we have been a faithful member in the church, we don't know how to pray as we ought we do not know what to pray for and we do not even know what to ask how to ask the father acceptably that's where the holy spirit comes in the holy spirit will reveal the mood of the father to you every time so you can enter into his pleasure and pray acceptably that's why the holy spirit is always at hand to help us the Holy Spirit knows what we should pray for. The prayer point must be rooted in the Holy Spirit. Did you hear me now? The prayer somebody said the prayer point must be rooted in the Holy Spirit. I, I thank God for prayer books. I appreciate God for the lives of everybody that have written out prayer books with prayer point. We thank God. The first thing I want you to know is that all these prayer books are first and foremost a product of the personal prayer life of the author. The experience they have with the Holy Spirit. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? There is nothing wrong with that. But beloved, you must not stay in that level if you are going to pray correctly. You must have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. There is enough prayer points in the Holy Spirit than you will have enough time and life to pray that's why nobody can have a lifestyle of prayer without the holy spirit i've been to prayer meetings that my heart was dry i was wondering what are we going to pray what are we going to pray? I, I just let me just go through and by the time i got there the holy spirit came and then the prayer came wow flood somebody say flood it just came it just came. That's the kind of prayer that you pray for four hours, six hours. You don't even know that time has 
God. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? So, it's very important the Holy Spirit help our infirmity in the place of prayer. And the Holy Spirit teaches us to pray. He teaches us to pray. He teaches us to pray. Just like Jesus taught his disciples to pray. True prayer is prayer in the spirit. Prayer in, prayer in the spirit. What I mean is this. Now listen to me. When I say prayer in the spirit, I'm not talking about speaking in tongues. Because on one side, if we are speaking in tongues, we are praying in the spirit. Do you get it now? But this other side, I'm talking of a prayer that is inspired by the Holy Spirit. A prayer that is inspired and directed by the Holy Spirit. The prayer in which the Holy Spirit leads us is the prayer according to the will of God. The prayer in which the Holy Spirit leads us is the prayer according to the will of God. Is that okay? Is the prayer according to the will of God. And I want to pray for you as from now. You will not pray of prayer. You will not pray like somebody that is shooting the ball over the bar. You will be praying by the Holy Ghost and you will be scoring critical goals in the name of Jesus. Nobody can pray without the Holy Spirit. That's why you need the Holy Spirit more. Okay? That's why you need the Holy Spirit. True prayer is prayer in the Spirit. True prayer is prayer in the Spirit. And prayer, the Holy Ghost help us to pray the will of the Father. I'm going to leave you with this. I'm going to pray for you that you will enter into a new experience in prayer from now on with the Holy Spirit. If they are begging you to pray, the Holy Spirit has not stepped in. But the moment the Holy Spirit takes over, you will find it interesting to pray. You will find it pleasurable to pray. And the beauty of it is that your prayer will be effective because your prayer will be according to the will of God. Okay? I want to pray for you that you will begin to see answers to prayer in this season more than ever before. Because you will no longer pray in the flesh. Spirit-led prayer. Somebody say spirit-led prayer. Say it again, spirit-led prayer. Let's rise up on our feet. Let the anointing rest upon you. To begin to pray spirit-led prayer. Spirit-led prayer. Spirit-led prayer. You will know the Holy Spirit. Especially beginning from this month and in this season, you will know the Holy Spirit. You will know the Holy Spirit personally. You will know the Holy Spirit individually. And then prayer will become more, it will become easier for you. Pleasurable. More accurate. The Holy Spirit will teach you to pray. And the Holy Spirit will tell you what to pray for. And the Holy Spirit will guide you how to pray. And the Holy Spirit will help your infirmity in the place of prayer. Next month, I will tell you what infirmity means. So that you know that it is nothing negative. It is most of the time something natural. That the Holy Spirit wants to take us away within, away from the limitation of the natural to enter into the realms of the Spirit. I pray for healing in your prayer life. Yeah. Healing. If, that, if you have been lazy in prayer, let the power of God begin to heal you now. That your spirit will be drawing to prayer. Your spirit will be drawing to prayer. Your spirit will be drawing to prayer. Only, oh, only a Bible she saw you. That is this songwriter that said, 
opolo anfani ku po la mu so nu nitori pe a ko se kini a ko fi o gbogbo sadura ni waju re i want to pray for you most of the time a christian is not supposed to complain a christian is not supposed to murmur about anything you don't complain about anybody you don't murmur it's a, it's a, it's a it's a how do i put it now it's a joker a christian go to the to the father right your husband is not doing well don't murmur don't complain go to god go to god are you hearing me now and by the time you go to god the holy spirit will instruct you on what to do and then you keep praying and then god will change the situation i have said no before to mommy on some issues and she didn't argue with me one of the things she doesn't do is she does not argue with me it's a blessing that i've enjoyed my wife does not argue with me it doesn't mean that she is satisfied with every decision are you hearing me now but this is how she does it many many times what did i say many many times i'm telling many many times i've taken a decision that she didn't like that did not satisfy her she will not say no 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 I will not allow you to do it. No, 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 no. She will go to God. She will pray. Sometimes she fast. Listen to me. And many, 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 many times. I will be the one to come back and say, Oni, you see that thing that I said we're going to do? I don't think we should do it that way again. I think we should do it this way. You see? And it will be exactly how she prayed. She will just smile and say, Praise God. Now, how many of you know there will be tension if she argue with me? How many of you know? Because sometimes many of you think that your pastor, your geo, fell from heaven. He doesn't have human blood. Because of I don't know are you hearing me now when instead ko bere lo wo wisdom would woman lo lati se every bele so pe obirin ologbo obirin ko ile e ko mu go ki lo se o fo wa re wo danu o ni fo wa re ba le ara eje that is one of the wisdom she uses are you hearing me now you go back and pray and then the holy ghost sometimes tell her what to do what to do what to do or sometimes the holy spirit will just come and work on me personally and before you know it, I'll come back. I'll change it. And I want to pray for you men too that you will not be stubborn. You will not be rebellious to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit The strength of a man is to listen to the voice of the Spirit. That's the strength of a man. If you are wrong, you are wrong. A wise man, a strong man will apologize. It's foolish man that say, ah, no, I will never, I will never. Oh, the book. Did you hear what I'm saying now? The Holy Spirit is our strength. So several times I'll come back and tell her, say, I'm sorry, we have to do it this way, this way, this way, and then we agree. I've had occasion that the Holy Ghost told me to go and apologize to her. That the way I spoke to her, I spoke to her roughly. I struggled with it, but I had no option. Because every time I opened the Bible, I didn't see anything again. I was preparing for the Lord. 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 I was preparing for and I went back to her. I said, I'm sorry. And then we sorted it out. Are you hearing what I'm saying? What I'm telling you, even our children didn't know. 
Praise God. So you've got to understand that. I want to pray for you that the hand of God will come upon you. It's not every time you complain. Christians don't complain. Christians don't murmur. We'll pray. Did you hear? We'll pray. God can do it. Prayer can change things. Whatever is not satisfactory, prayer can change it. God will do it. It is when you pray, the Holy Ghost will, will tell you what to do that will make the difference. Oh, nefagidi jaye mo. Wa ma fe mi mo jaye. Aye dum taba fe mi mo jaye. Shobo. Aye shekini. Taba fe shekini. Taba fe mi mo jaye. Put your hands on your head. And I want you to pray, Holy Spirit, I want to know you. In this season, reveal yourself to me more. I want to know you. Heal my prayer life. I will not be an ordinary believer. I want to be an empowered believer. Empowered by the Holy Ghost. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Empowered believer. Empowered by the Holy Ghost. Empowered believer, empowered by the Holy Ghost. Pray, 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 pray. The Lord is listening to you. Your prayer life will be interesting from now on. You will know the Holy Spirit even more. You will begin to pray from now and be acceptable to the Father. You will no longer pray off prayer. You will not be an ordinary human being. You will be an empowered believer. An empowered believer in your area, in your field. You will be empowered. In your business, you will be empowered. Ah. Emi ma aro e la gbara. Aro e ni agbara. Oh, ni je ni e yek mere mo. You will not be an empty man, an empty woman. You will be an empowered believer. As you go out, as you go today, and as you go this month, empowered believer. The Bible says, not by power, not by mind, but by my spirit. You will operate in your business by the gift of the Holy Spirit. Wisdom from the Spirit. We rest upon you. Those of you who are students, you are no longer going to be an ordinary student. You are an empowered student. Empowered student. With the intelligence of the Holy Ghost upon you. Your grade will improve by the Holy Spirit. Everyone here, you are empowered. You are not helpless. Let the anointing of the Holy Spirit rest upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. I put the mark of the Holy Ghost upon your life. You will have a desire, a task, a passion for the Holy Ghost. You will know the Holy Spirit more. You will profit by your knowledge of the Holy Spirit. You will not be an ordinary human being. Many of us say it's only pastors that need the Holy Spirit. Yes, the truth is pastors need the Holy Spirit. But the truth is this. You equally need the Holy Spirit to live in that husband house. You need the Holy Spirit to lead your wife to be a good head, a good father, a good husband. You need the Holy Spirit to be a bright, brilliant student. You need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is interested in everything we are doing. I want to pray for you that you begin to take advantage of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is your major help on the earth. You will not neglect your help. Particularly, I pray that your prayer life will come back alive. It will not be dry. It will be inspired, guided, initiated, orchestrated by the Holy Ghost. The heavens over you are open and answers will begin to come like never before. You will open the door and it will remain open. You will close the door and the door will remain closed. You are not a weak person. You are an empowered person. You are empowered above your problem, empowered above the problem of life, empowered above enemy, empowered above any situation that rises against you. In the name of Jesus, you will not be frustrated. Rather, the Holy Ghost will frustrate the token of the enemies. 
The token of the liars will be frustrated. Anointed wisdom is with you. You will always have a way out in every situation. You will not be stranded. You will not be trapped. From the first day to the last day of August, let the power of the Holy Ghost rest upon your life. This month, you sleep, you wake up, you go, you go out, you come back. No evil befall you, no sickness come near your dwelling place. Good news will follow you all around. The Lord will turn your money into joy and give you a turnaround, a turnaround miracles. It is well with you. Thank you, Father. Say, I am empowered. I'm not a weak person. I'm empowered by the Spirit to function correctly in life. That is your portion in Jesus' name. Are you blessed? Is it worth your coming? God bless you.